Hey guys, welcome to the beginners class and today we're gonna go through some basic basic guard retention drills and uh, this is some of the things that I showed to my guys when they just came into the academy and to give them an idea of what it is to be on the ground having an opponent standing uh, in front of you. And so uh, just let's go get going. Yeah. So first off, super nice and easy. I'm here on the bottom and Christian is standing right in front of me, right? And so what Christian is gonna start doing is he's gonna walk to the sides, right? And so my feet are always in front of his hips. And I, I wanna make sure that I'm not putting my feet low here because then it's easy for him to push them down. He can jump over to a mount, all those kind of crazy things, right? So I'm gonna keep at least one foot on his hip here when I'm, he starts to move, right? So if he moves to the right, I'm gonna put my left foot inside of his thigh here or inside of his knee here, right? This is gonna help me move myself with him without using too much power from my side, right? So if he moves back to the left, I'm gonna hook on the other side here, which helps me hook and follow him effortlessly back and forth, right? Now, a very common mistake here from the bottom is that I have to round my back. I can't stay flat here, right? This is a typical beginner mistake, is that he walks out of reach and I start moving with my hands like this, okay? By doing this, I'm very vulnerable and I have no grips on Christian whatsoever. So I wanna make sure that I'm a little bit more bald here. And watch how I can move much easier. And also I'm, I have a much uh, less like fr uh, friction against the mat when I'm, we're moving back side to side, right? So if I'm flat here and he starts moving, I'm almost glued to the floor. Whereas when I'm more like this, I'm a ball, right? and I can easily move myself around on my back here. So try that a couple of times where the guy is moving back and forth here, and he can start getting more tricky, like changing direction whenever he wants to. And this is a super nice drill that you can start out with, right? We're just gonna go straight to the next one here where what's gonna happen is Christian is gonna push my legs forward and then he's gonna walk to my side here. Nice and easy here. You can step a little bit forward. Ooh. Okay, so here going for the easy hip escape. My hands are gonna be in front of me and I'm moving my hips to the other side here. So moving out, I'm gonna step in with my foot and bring the bottom leg through, right? So always remember to step in with the outer leg first so that if he throws this leg away, it's easy for me to get back this one, right? Contrary, what happens a lot if I step in with this leg first is there's no way for me to get this leg back in, okay? So, he steps tight to me here. I'm gonna hit the skate, step in with the outer leg and bring in the bottom leg, right? He can do the other side here. Boom, hit the skate, outer leg, then the inner leg, right? So, super nice drills, moving back and forth, right? He passes me, boom. Hit the skate, step in, and back to guard, right? Oops. Okay guys, so we're gonna go a little bit further here and this is gonna be more of a game, super nice to help people uh, start understanding the concept of a guard. And uh, so what we're gonna do here is the same position as we did before, but this time, Christian, is his mission is to touch my head, right? And we could say every time he touches my head, he gets a point. And so I want to avoid this by keeping him in front of my feet, right? This will also help you understand the concept of distance, whereas if I, he's too close, he can always touch my head, right? Of course, he has really long arms, but I always want to make sure that this distance is controlled. And so now he's forced to push my legs away and walk around so that he can touch my head, right? So the game here is essentially just, you can put on a timer, Put on one minute, two minutes, right? And then switch bottom to top, nice and easy. But he wants to move around and touch me on my head and I want to prevent it. Nice and easy, super nice game to help you out with your uh, guard retention. So we can just do the show here. And he gets a point, <laughs> right? And so we're gonna move back and forth a little bit more. Here, right? And you can always start blocking a little bit with your hands, be more like active with your hands here to prevent him from getting grips. This will help on uh, later on as well, right? 
Close. So guys, we're gonna go a little bit further here and this is another drill that I like to put in and this is gonna be more of a cross-stepping and perhaps a little bit more advanced than the first few that we did. But essentially what we're trying to do here, we're gonna start with a really basic version of it and I'm gonna put my foot on the opposite hip here and I'm gonna point my toes the other, the other way, right? Or outwards here, okay? So when I do this, I'm gonna lift my hips off the floor so I'm activating my hips here. They're not flat on the floor, right? And now I'm gonna set my foot over here on the other hip, okay? So as I do so, I'm gonna remove that bottom leg and turn back. So this is a nice drill that you could just do. You could do it on a wall, but now I'm doing it on Christian because he's kind. So here, going back and forth, nice and easy, right? So this is perhaps the most basic version, right? Now we can put a little more element in it where he's walking a little bit back first. So Christian's gonna move forward as I do the drill. So here I really, I have to be on my shoulders and I'm gonna walk on my shoulders back and forth now. So watch, I'm gonna curl up like a ball, but I'm moving backwards as I do the same drill we just did, okay? Eventually, or we can do that one more time. So here, walking, watch how I'm going on my shoulders, back and forth here. Boom, nice and easy. So eventually what you wanna be able to do is when he's grabbing one leg and he's throwing it to the side here, I wanna be able to switch my hips and then step over to the other side, right? And so you could do the same thing here. He grabs here, you could always recover, right? And this will help out later on in a lot of different passes uh, when we are going for Toriano or uh, uh, knee slide. There could be different kind of passes where this is going to help you quite a lot. Oops. Okay, so last one for today here. Eventually what we're always looking for uh, is a little bit of a concept on gripping and controlling the guy. And we're going to add a little extra drill at the end here as well. So when Christian is moving around, now, I only have my feet connected to you, right? And eventually, I want to gain more control over Christian's body and limit the amount of mobility he has, right? And to do so, I'm looking to grip, for example, the pants on one side. I can hook the inside of the opposite thigh. I can look for the sleeve, the, the collar. But this connects me to Christian here, right? It, the less connections I have, the less control I have, and the more likely he's going to pass me. So this concept goes throughout Jiu-Jitsu a lot, right? So I'm always looking to connect myself to him as much as possible and limit how much he can move without me, right? So by having all these grips, now suddenly if you're trying to move anywhere, I'm following him super easily, right? And I can dictate wherever he wants to go or set up for attacks as well, right? So now I'm controlling his posture, which is super good for other attacks as well, okay? So when you guys are moving around, you can start looking for grips on the, the Achilles or the collar or the sleeve, right? Eventually, you're gonna start noticing one little pattern that's gonna help you out quite a bit, and that is diagonal control, right? So I don't want to control only one side of Christian because now it leaves one side completely free here, okay? So eventually you're gonna st start to see that you want to control the opposite leg and the opposite arm, for example, right? So having this in mind, I'm always gonna look for, for example, the classical Belahiba grip here, opposite shoulder, opposite leg, right? Diagonal control, this is super nice. I'm cramping him together and it's super hard for him to move anywhere, right? He has to break the grips first, and then he can start moving around. And this concept is super important to know in Jiu Jitsu, and you're gonna see it as you go further and further in through the ranks as well, right? Okay guys, so one extra drill here. This one is a little bit fun, and it's gonna help you a lot when you want to start doing some inverted guards and maybe even some lasso, but this drill is super nice to get you an idea of uh, orientation uh, with your partner or your sparring partner as you go. And so what we're going to do here, it's a situation where Christian is right behind my head here, right? And so what I'm looking to do here is cross my legs now, and I'm going to cook the size of his hips with my feet. So I'm going to go back, and I'm looking for this, okay? 
So you're going to roll back here. If you feel like this is hard or this is, this is not like you're, you're able because you're not flexible enough or whatever, you can use your hands on his legs. This is going to help you be able to pull up right and come here. Okay. So now, having one leg on the top here, this is what's going to dictate which side I want to spin. Okay. So if this leg is on the top, I want to spin this way. Right? If it's the opposite, I'm going to spin the other way. So here, I'm going to spin this way and come back to guard. Nice and easy drill here, right? Be sure not to spin the other way though, because if that happens, you're going to be a pretzel. So you're going to be here, and if I spin this way, you just end up winding yourself even more, okay? So you want to make sure to always spin towards the top leg this way, right? Nice drill. Uh, might not be exactly this situation that you're going to use it, but gives you an idea of what you're capable of. Right? <laughs> Here, boom, and back. Boss. Hey guys, welcome to the beginner's class, and today we're going to go through some guard retention, super basic, 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 <laughs> basic drills uh, that I think you will need, uh, especially if you're a beginner to jiu-jitsu, this is super good for you, okay? So, here on the bottom, how to handle a guy who's standing here, okay? So, my feet, this is my guard, right? And I want to always control the distance between him. And this is going to help out a lot to understand how I'm controlling my, with my feet on his hips here, okay? So, always be sure not to have both feet on the ground because then he can step over or if my, both my feet are on the side, he's going to step around, right? So I'm always looking to have a certain control with my feet, okay? But now he's going to be more dynamic, he's going to start moving around. So if he's moving to the right here, I'm going to put my left leg on the inside of his thigh here or his knee, okay? So if he moves, I can hook so that I'm following his movement and I'm still straight in front of him, okay? If he moves back, I can switch my hooks so that I have the right leg here on the inside of his thigh here, okay? So we can walk back and forth a couple of times just to understand this concept. But then comes the thing about my back here, right? I can't be flat. This is like a common mistake when you start out in Jiu-Jitsu. You start moving with your hands and you're like this all the time, right? And the thing about this is this leaves you very vulnerable and very inefficient, right? So you want to make sure that you're more curled up like a ball here, right? So now you have a smaller surface up against the mat, which creates less friction. So that when he starts moving, it's much easier for me to follow, right? Here, back and forth, right? Nice and easy. So try always to hunch up a little bit here, and this is gonna help you a lot when you try to play guard here on the bottom. So basic drill, back and forth, and now we're gonna add a little extra thing here, the hip escape. When Christian starts pushing my legs to the side and he's going to start passing me a little bit here. So now he pushes and then he walks up right beside me. Nice and easy going for the basic hip escape here. Hands in front of me here and I'm going to lean over to the side so that my hips can freely move backwards here. Okay. So now I'm going to use my feet on the floor, push back, and now I'm going to step in with the outer leg on his hip here. Okay. So then I can bring the bottom leg through and step right in front of him. So now I'm squared up, right? Important little detail here is I'm always stepping with the outer leg because if he pushes this leg, I always have that extra leg to come in and save myself, right? If, let's say I stepped in with the first leg here and he pushes, watch how hard it is for me to come back with this bottom leg now and I'm more uh, vulnerable to getting passed or even smashed down here, right? So make sure that when you're hip escaping, or we can do it from here, boom, he pushes my leg, I'm hip escaping, I'm getting the outer leg first and then the bottom leg, okay? And then always with these kind of drills, you wanna drill both sides. <laughs> so here, hip escape, bring the leg in and back inside here, right? So you could always combine both of the, these drills where he's gonna walk to the side, walk to the other side here, eventually he's gonna pass, Set, and then we're back again, right? Super nice drill, uh, very essential for guard retention, and yeah, give it a try. Yes. So, okay guys, so we're gonna go a little bit further here. 
uh, with the guard retention drills. And so now I wanted to make yeah I want to make it a game for uh, both of you, and this is perfect to start getting more uh, into the sparring mode and uh, start to understand the concept of guard retention, right? So here with Christian in front of me, I want to always keep my feet in front of him, okay? And one important detail here is because the game is all about him trying to touch my head, right? So if I'm not controlling the distance, I will eventually let him come too close, right? So now I'm keeping distance by pushing with my legs at all times. So now if he tries to reach for my head, it's too far, right? This is also a very important concept to understand where he can get grips and where he can start setting up some passes, right? So now eventually he's going to start moving up to the side and what he tries to do is push my legs a little bit here and touch my head, right? So my goal here is to just keep him in front of my legs as we go. So he's going to walk around, boom, here, back and forth. I'm going to keep my hands up, preventing him from getting any good hits on my head or grips, right? And now eventually he's going to get that pass, right? And then he would uh, manage to get the point, right? So the game is... Pretty much he can not get as many points as he want and I want and <laughs> when the time run out, runs out so you can put on a timer like two minutes or one minute and then you change from bottom to top and perhaps if you want to keep a score you can see who gets the most points right and um, it's important to try always to go back and like don't be too predictable on top you always want to make it a little bit complicated for the guy bottom but again not too complicated so the person doesn't manage to retain right so this is something that will always help you as a uh, partner for others or vice versa you want to be able to give them just enough uh uh oh, i have it up nike spaceman just enough uh resist Resistance. <laughs> you, just, you want to give them just enough resistance uh, to uh, help them learn and to uh, help them out to get it done. Yeah. Get better. Get better. Us. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're going to go a little bit further here. And this is perhaps a little bit more advanced as we go with the guard retention drills. So we're going to start off with a basic version first. So here on the bottom, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to place my right foot on his opposite hip here, okay? So I'm always turning my foot inwards or uh, outwards in my case, right? And what I want to do now is I want to be able to move this leg over and step on his opposite hip here, okay? Important detail is your hips can't be flat on the floor. This is not going to help out. You want to really engage and put some weight into that leg here, okay? So now I'm going to step over and watch how I'm going to let go of this bottom leg and then turn in again, okay? So this is a super nice drill where you can just keep going around like a figure eight, back and forth here, okay? Same principle here where I have to be hunched up like a ball. If I'm flat, this is going to be super uh, inefficient and it's going to prevent me from moving as much as I can. I want to be more my, uh, like a ball and moving from shoulder to shoulder as we go, right? So eventually what we're going to do to make this a little bit harder and give us more idea of how to use this is Christian's going to move back and he's going to walk forward as I do so, right? So even more important is that I control the distance and I'm going to push him off so that I slide backwards while we're doing this. So here, I'm, he's walking forward, I'm walking from side to side, back and forth, but still keeping the distance the whole time here, okay? So one more time. Here, back and forth, moving there. Okay? So eventually what you can experiment a little bit with is when Christian tries to throw my legs to the side. So he's gonna throw, for example, my right leg and I'm trying to save myself with the left leg, okay? And bring myself in. So he gotta do the other side, boom, step, and bring in, okay? So one more time, boom, and back in, okay? So these are super nice drills and uh, super nice when people are trying to pass you and you really have to save yourself uh, in that last little moment, right? Okay guys, so we're gonna talk a little bit about a concept about control. So uh, what you're gonna see now is a lot of times when he's moving around you and he's trying to pass is that he's very free to move and do as he wants, right? 
So what you want to do, you want to constrain his movement and limit it as much as possible. To do that, you have to use your grips and then your hooks, your feet all the time to prevent it and, and stop him from moving too much, right? So, uh, essentially, you're always going to start with pretty much those two connections, right? Your feet here, okay? But what you want to do, you want to gain more connections to him. So, with Christian here, having two connections, or let's say just one, it's, it's pretty dangerous or very risky, okay? So, I always want to make sure to, for example, get a grip on his uh, Achilles here, which is already a better uh, position because I have three connections to him, right? So now I can, for example, hook the inside of his thigh on the opposite side, so I can stretch this, pull this, pull the other leg. Already now I'm constraining his movement. And this is a very uh, like normal and a concept that goes through Jiu-Jitsu all the time. You want to control the position, control the person on top, and prevent them from moving freely and setting up attacks, right? And so another concept that you're going to see coming through a lot is uh, diagonal control. And one of the th places that I like to think about here is a lot of like reversal of HIVA is I always look for a control in the opposite arm, for example, here. Having this control where I'm controlling one leg and the opposite arm will give me a lot of control. As where I'm controlling one side here on this, for example, leaves one side pretty free and this can also make him uh, or let him start to set up uh, a couple of attacks and it's even easier for him to get out, okay? So if you can, especially this, it's a little bit difficult in nogi because you don't have all the grips uh, like you have on the person on top, right? But you can always look for armpits, uh, underhooks. I always like to angle so I can grip behind his tricep and turn his thumb down like this because if his arm is straight, he can just pull it straight out like this, right? But if I can do this, it's hard for him to pull it out. So these are the kind of grips you're gonna look for in uh, Nogi, right? So thinking about a little bit the, uh, about the concepts of control is gonna help you out a lot in the beginning, uh, starting off as a guard player. Oops. Okay guys, so last drill for today. This one is a little bit fun and uh, it's uh, something that will fit more in specific situations, but it's still a good guard retention drill and it will give you a good sense of coordination and how to come back to guard. So, starting here with Christian right above my head, and what I'm gonna do here, maybe move a little bit back. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna bring my feet up and I'm gonna cross them and hook the sides of Christian's hips, okay? So, I'm gonna cross my legs and hook his hips here, okay? So, if you feel like this is hard, you can always use his legs and use your arms to pull yourself up like this. This is also just a nice drill to help you understand, okay? So when I hook his hips, I want to make sure that I'm going to spin to the same side as my top leg, okay? Or, I mean the opposite, actually. So where my foot points, that's where I'm going. So when I'm going here, I'm going to spin towards that foot here and go through. So now I'm back in the squared up uh, guard here, okay? So, if you don't do it that way, you're gonna end up like a pretzel. So you wanna make sure that you always spin towards that foot. If you don't, this happens and that's not good, right? So you wanna always go towards this leg and spin out, right? If you wanna make the drill, he's just gonna pass me, walk over, well, let's do from this angle. So here, crossing my legs, spin, back to guard. He walks over, spin, Back to go, okay? So you can always combine all these different drills that we've been going through today. And uh, yeah, make it fun. Try to make it a game. Uh, that's the way most of us learn the best. Awesome.